Hey there, adepts. Welcome back. More majorlings. I still can't decide. You know, I, I like adepts. Adepts sounds way better than majorlings. Anyway, welcome back. How you guys doing today? I hope you're doing well. Today we are going to be making progress towards making... Well, towards making Invar, I guess, because we need to make Invar to make everything else that we want to make. And, as you see, I went ahead and made a bunch more chests because I was getting annoyed at not having inventory space to dump things in. I know, I know, it's... It's kind of stupid just making a whole bunch of chests and just plopping them down with no organization. But I don't care right now because I want to just create... I don't care about organization. I, I will save organization for when I make a stockpile. But for now, I don't have a stockpile, so everything just goes in a RAM chest. Kind of like my apartment. We have a bunch of stuff in random boxes. Anyway. Okay, that's not good. We are going to be making something kind of special to start with. Yeah, I guess I'll smelt that down quick. As you might notice, my tin reserves are a little bit lower than they were last episode. And that's if you pay attention to that stuff. Which, if you do, I kind of find you strange for paying attention to such a small detail. Oh boy, and we're getting a little bit of lag right away. That's wonderful. Ugh, come on. Every time I walk, it's lagging. Right now, lag is not bad. Might be a problem with fraps. I don't know. We need to take this tool station out, because that is essential for what we're making. So you're going to need to make some grout. And grout is made with gravel and clay. We have plenty of clay. Gravel is probably going to be upstairs, so we'll have to go and get that. And I can show you the progress I've made on the tower. But first we're going to take a nap because it's dark outside. <clears throat> Pardon me. Stupid zombies. So yes, I've made some progress on my walkway bridge thing of doom. It is now a thing of doom. Why? Because I claim it is. What other reason do you need? Gotten most of the walls up so it's not as dangerous to walk around down here. Started finishing this section and there's going to be, I think, one more room up above this one and then it'll be the top of the tower. Which will look impressive from this angle because, well, there will be a tower right here where it is actually very nicely defended. Oops, that's not the W button. Imagine someone walking along and trying to take, after taking the main area, if they actually do take this main entrance, imagine them walking along and continuing trying to get to the main tower where... I would reside, casting my magics out, and hopefully laying see laying waste to the enemy siege. Imagine them trying to take this bridge, defended by loyal guards. Have several of them lined up right here to hold them back as archers rain down arrows onto this narrow walkway that they would have a hard time. Let's just say they would have a hard time getting across because. With all the arrows raining down and the line of guards defending the walkway, you'd have to have a pretty decent force to take that out. Ugh, the leg! It's going to be another one of those episodes, doesn't it, where I have to stop every two minutes to get the leg to go away. I hate it when that happens. I still don't know what causes it, either. Ah, here we go. Gravel. Oh, yes. This is what a hop seed door looks like. 
it does not look very well made. It looks kind of fragile. You know, I get the clay and I need sand, which is down below. Darn it! I should have grabbed that. Oh well, we have to go down anyway. Da -da -da. I love that with the longsword. It's fun to just launch yourself in a random direction. Sprint off running. And we need... Only, th only three grout, technically, but... This should be good enough, I think. I hope. Maybe? Yeah, one turns to one, so... No, wait, wait. Um, we actually are going to need four each, so we need one more set. There we go. I don't have any coal anymore. I kind of used it all up. Which is annoying, I guess. Yes, it's annoying to put it in mild terms. We do have a bunch of sugarcane, though. We can burn sugarcane, I believe. Right? Yes, all is not lost. We have sugarcane technology. It will not last us very long, but if it gets us at least four, maybe five seared bricks, that'll be good enough. <laughs> this is such a waste of sugar cane. I can use sugar cane to make power, for instance. <sighs> I just have to wait and wait and wait. So, the main reason that we're going to be needing all this seared brick is because we are going to be making a special tool to start out. One that will make it much easier to mine. Ah, leg! Ah, the leg has got to stop. I don't think I'm gonna get all my all my cedar bricks. Uh, it's gonna push it. Maybe I can burn the ladders. I cannot burn the ladders. No, we're so close. Just one seared brick. Just one. Ah, we almost had that. Do I have any wood anywhere? No, I don't. Where's my axe at? Is it upstairs? Oh, we have this. That'll do. Stupid pink eucalyptus slabs. There we go. So we take these seared bricks, turn them into brick blocks. And now we take these blocks of tin and this tool station Put the tin like this, and the seared bricks across the top, and we have a tool forge. Significantly different. Now, what can a tool forge do that a tool station can't? Well, it can make these mega tools. These tools require four bits each, instead of the typical two to three. So you can make them out of four different materials if you wanted to. And the tool we're looking at making is a hammer. Why a hammer? Because it is a much more effective mining tool than a pickaxe. It mines in a much bigger area. Now, the reason that we want a hammer is mainly so when we're trying to excavate a large area, it's a lot faster to do so. And I've actually got some of the parts made already. 
I have a large stone plate, a tough stone tool rod, and the hammerhead. However, we are going to have to make some casts of these first. So, do I have the tool rod already? I forgot. Let's see, sword blade, regular tool rod. Nope, I don't have the tough tool rod, so we'll start with that one. And I just love the fact that the plate has a creeper face on it. That's pretty cool. So there we have it. We have most of the parts ready. And we're actually going to give this thing a little bit more durability than it normally would have by giving it an iron face as well. Which should be good enough to mine a lot more materials. Now take a look how much iron this is actually using. Almost as much as an iron block. It uses 8 material per. And we will go ahead and put it into this one, I guess. Now we will switch to the hammer. Put in the plates, the hammerhead, and the tool rod. It's got an okay durability, not the greatest, but it does have reinforced one on it, which will give it some extra chance of extra chance of not using durability. And unfortunately, it's only mining level iron, so if we find anything that requires an iron tool to mine, well, <laughs> we might be out of luck. Hmm. I wonder if that's because of the head. Let's go and make a head out of iron instead. Or, you know what? I think we could do it out of bronze. Hmm. Do we have enough bronze? I'm guessing we might not. Ooh, we might barely... Oh, we barely had enough bronze. That's awesome. <laughs> of course, we're going to have to make more bronze in the future if we want to make anything else with bronze. Let's see how that does... Yep, mining level redstone. That's a good amount. Durability, very good. It's got the stone bound thing too, so as it's being drained of its durability, it'll mine faster. Now one thing I like about this is that you can switch which side has the hammerhead or the plate. It doesn't really make much of a difference, but it looks kind of neat doing it different ways. So we're just going to take that and let's go give this a try. Nope, it's going to be nighttime. Let's take a nap quick. And the thing we're going to go ahead and try this on is actually the quarried stone area. So it's a, it's a bit of a sprint. Now one thing that's cool about this hammer is that you don't really need to switch weapon switch to a weapon when attacking because a hammer is a weapon. And what's best is it's especially effective versus the undead. So zombies and skeletons, you know, the typical creatures you'd end up fighting underground, they will fall pretty fast to your hammer. There is a better weapon that I want to make, however, and that is a scythe. Now, a scythe is also a great farming tool, along with a great weapon. When you use it as a farming tool, it affects a 3x3 three three area. So it'll, it'll till a 3x3 three three patch of soil, it'll harvest a 3x3 three three patch as well, I believe. Ah, oh, look at that! This is going to make gathering this quarried stone so much easier. And I believe this is also directional, so if you do it from this side, it'll take out a different angle. Pretty cool. Yeah. 
Anyway, the scythe, when you use it as a weapon, will actually affect a 3x3 a three three area in front of it. So, you can attack multiple mobs in one swing. Hey, it doesn't affect the dirt at all. Awesome. So I'm going to take some time to gather up all this quarried stone. Oh boy. And possibly render a video because it could be that I have too much video recorded. See you soon. Alright everyone, so I just got back from mining. I went ahead and got a whole bunch more coal. And I got a bunch, bunch more cobblestone, so I'm going and smelting a whole bunch of smooth stone now. Because <laughs> going to need it. Always going to need it. Oh wait, I need four glass. And I need the ingot mold. Ingot cast, whatever you want to call it. Because we need a bit of gold. Just a tiny bit of gold. Just, just give me a little, little ingot. One more, please. There we go. Got ourselves an ingot. We're going to start working on making ourselves a pulverizer because we need a pulverizer. <sighs> So many things to do just to get ourselves an endless supply of power. Okay, so machine frame made. Next up we need two flint. I think I have a couple upstairs. A couple copper. I might have a couple of those upstairs. Redstone reception coil. We need another gold ingot. Ah, yes. Look at all this wonderful molten iron. I love having that much iron. We could make a golem out of all that iron. We make lots of golems, actually. But that'd be a waste of my time. Do I have any copper down here, actually? I have a bronze. Ooh, yes, actually, I need to use that bronze. None here. There's not going to be anything else in there. Okay. Let's put the hammer there. See, this does not really do much. But take a look at that. The durability goes up to f by 101. And when we add the bronze, the mining speed actually decreases because of the stonebound thing. That is actually pretty cool. I don't know what this bonus thing is. So, I don't know. But it decreases when we fix the hammer. So I'm assuming that maybe it is... I'm assuming maybe it's part of the stonebound thing, like that's the increased mining speed. Hello, castle that I can see through. Okay, let's get upstairs and see if we can find some copper. I was pretty sure I had everything down here, but I might have left some upstairs. It's always worth double checking. And while we go up, we can add some more to our tower. Speaking of towers, I kind of realized that the entrance I had on this side of the future tower that's going to be here would actually be one block lower than all the other towers. So in order to fix that, I'm going to have entrance on this side instead. That'll fix the small problem of the towers being awkwardly set up. Let's see, none in here. None in here. Drop my force my force gems there though. Hmm. Maybe I did have all my copper. Must have used it all then. Hmm. I was gonna grab something, but I forgot what it was already. 
I'll leave my uranium there. Yeah, I'll bring this down, because it could come in handy. Enough of that. Let's get out of here. <laughs> that long sword is so much fun. Okay. Uh, redstone. I think I have some in here. Yes, I do. Perfect. Hi, CPU usage by Java TM Platform SE Binary. Well, too bad. Okay, so gold there, and stone on each side. That's the reception coil done. Oh dear, I need wood. Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. <sighs> you think you have everything going well, and then you realize you forgot something. Okay, let's make it daytime. I just need a little bit of wood. And all the wood's over there. So I have to sprint over there to get the wood, so I can run back over here, Finish what I'm doing. I need to plant some trees closer for when I run out of wood. You know what? This eucalyptus will do just fine. It's got that stupid pink wood. You know what happens when you make a door out of eucalyptus? It has a heart in it. It's kind of like the mod makers making fun of the eucalyptus or something. That's enough of that. Hey, where's my flag? Princess, you're supposed to go in here. That's where you're supposed to stay, so you can keep on making more bees and honeycombs. Okay, eucalyptus. I'm making so many pistons in this series. It's like they're using everything. Even weapons can use pistons. Okay, flint. Oh, that was upstairs. I have gravel, don't I? Oh, I had gravel. Oh, wait, was that? Ah, just enough flint. Perfect. Machine frame, reception coil, the flint, and the piston, and there we go. Pulverizer made. Now I just have to grab this engine and some peat. And let's just make a couple torches. Okay, ready to fire it up. Mm. Eh, let's just put it right here. Ah, stop hitting the E button. Okay, so get the ferrous ore in here and put the peat in here. We'll only put four in for now to see how well it works. 
I do like that the fire's green. It's green energy. Ooh, wow, this is pumping a very small amount of energy in here. It'll probably do better when it's warmed up and it's able to pump better. Because each of these things has a heat factor to it. And the more heat it has, the faster the engine goes. And the faster the engine goes, the more energy it puts out. So, it might be a while, but it should be able to create enough energy. We can, we're going to need some iron, so let's just get an iron, iron block. Come on, come on, come on, give me, give me, give me, give me. There, put the iron in there as well. That's not going to get clogged at all because those things have double output slots, which is good because you could put two different things to get pulverized in at once without jamming up the system. Okay, so this should give us enough to make 12 invar, so we should be set because I believe it gives you two per recipe, right? Three per recipe. Wow, that's actually way more than I thought. And we're still using the first bit of peat, so these engines are very functional. And we'll leave one in there for now. Oops, should stack that. And it looks like we've burned through most... We've gotten all the cobblestone turned to smooth that I put in there. So oh, wonderful with that. I know you have a chance of getting ferrous, pulverized ferrous metal when you put in an iron ore as well, so... It's a small chance though, a very, very small chance. You're still going good. That's wonderful. Very wonderful. By the way, look at all the quartz stone I got. It's a lot of quartz stone. So I'm definitely considering making some decorative decorative parts of the walls out of the quartz stone because it just looks amazing. Come on. Give me one more. There we go. I actually don't need nearly as much iron as I put in there. It's kind of silly of me. So we can save this one feet thing as well. This will it's okay to leave this running because it'll just store up the energy that's pumping in. And it shouldn't explode, I hope. If it explodes, whoops. Alright, we have a perfect amount of Invarda smelt. Oh, hey, why was I looking at the ceiling? Uh, do I have any more ores down here? I don't think so. Yeah, there's no more ore. Okay, so the next step is to make an induction smelter. And the induction smelter requires another redstone reception coil, another machine frame, two invar, and two copper. So we're going to have to get started on that. We'll leave the invar to smelt right now. Go get our gold ready.
gonna need two. And thanks to me get, having surplus iron, we don't need to get any more of that. Mm -hmm. And we have some spare buckets. I guess we'll use one of those. And you know, I'm gonna put these books in here. Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't actually notice. That I got two of these things now because I made the tool forge, and it gave me an extra one for free. That's kind of awesome. Okay, so we got our copper, the invar. The machine frame, reception coil, and there we go. Induction smelter. Huzzah! We've made an induction smelter. And now, to place it there, flip this around, and we'll put in two peat. And we won't turn it on quite yet. Because we needed to get hardened glass, right? Yes. Hardened glass, which requires pulverized obsidian. <sighs> pulverized obsidian. And pulverized lead works as well. Which we can make some pulverized lead pretty easily. We have some lead on us. I didn't actually plan on pulverizing the lead yet. I just brought it down because I was going to have the pulverizer down here and I was going to store it in a chest. Now, can I get pulverized obsidian by pulverizing an obsidian ingot? It doesn't look like it. Obsidian dust? Uh, no. Okay, so pulverized obsidian requires obsidian. And you can... What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. I wish I knew that sooner. This would have been so much easier than going and mining all that obsidian. Oh good, I can just dump the obsidian into here. That's great. Great. So, I turn you back into an obsidian block. Wow, that fills up very fast. Got four pulverized lead now. That's good enough, I guess. So we're gonna actually actually have to let this thing run for a while. But we take the pulverized lead, put it in here, and when we have enough pulverized obsidian, how much obsidian do we? One each. Oh boy, it's gonna be a Pain in the ass. But how much glass do we get? Two. So we need. Hey, gather. <laughs> we'll need a few more of these obsidian blocks. You'd think that would just be lava, wouldn't you? Because that's what turns into obsidian is lava. So you would think that liquid obsidian would be lava. But like, apparently not. We didn't get any ash from this yet, which is unfortunate. But I'm fine with that. So another machine we're going to need to make, actually, is going to be the liquid transposer. Liquid, liquid transposer. Which is going to require more gold and basically the same thing as the induction smelter, just with glass instead of invar. Okay. 
And my phone goes beep. Okay, let's get the Pulverized Obsidian in there and we're going to rotate this as we get the copper going. Look at me, I'm multitasking! I'm setting up the build for the next machine while the other machines are currently doing their jobs. Oh, we're going to need some more iron, and I don't have any here. <sighs> so much work goes into this stuff. Oh, and there's the leg again. I thought I got rid of you, leg. You don't have any reason to be here. That did not help. Okay, it's gone for now. Just stay away, leg. Stay away from me. Two, three, four. I'm gonna need to go mining again. I just got done mining. I need to go mining again already because I'm using up so much stuff. We need another bucket. I'm using up all my buckets now, too. I need so many things. I need diamonds. I need buckets. I need... I need to get that reinforced glass. We're going to let that fill up with energy. Hey, some ash! Wonderful! With... Ash, I can make bituminous peat. Bituminous, bit, bituminous, bituminous, bituminous. The recipe for that is non-existent. Bituminous, bitumen, bituminous peat. It requires propolis, and propolis you get by centrifuging certain types of honeycomb, or certain types of propolis, or by squeezing honey drops. Hmm. Well, it'll be a while before I start actually squeezing honey, so bituminous peat, not something that we're going to be getting anytime soon. Oh wait, did I empty this out yet? I did, good. And just so we're getting some energy to the liquid transposer, Okay, it's doing a weird glitch where it's rotating multiple times. Stop doing that, machine. <laughs> See now, we're going to have to actually move our engine at some point. Because the other thing we need to do is make a magma crucible. Is it the Magma Crucible we need to make? I forget. I think it's the Magma Crucible that melts down redstone. Uh, can I look it up in here? Let's see. Shaped crafting. It's not going to be that. Shapeless? No. Not brewing. Yes! Magma Crucible! Turns redstone into destabilized redstone. Well, it's a different name now. That's kind of cool. But you get 100 MB per. Okay. So if I look up an energy cell, in order to make a 
full one, I need to get the, get the frame filled, and it will take 4,000 MB. Oh boy, I forgot how much it takes. So that's going to require 40 redstone. I do not have that much redstone. <laughs> this is all my redstone. No! Uh, so much energy needed to get stuff done. But I can't complain, because we are getting on the right track to making ourselves power. And when we get enough stuff made, we're going to need to make some farm blocks. We'll probably make them... Probably just going to make them out of regular stone brick, which is going to require us to get electron tubes. And electron tubes are going to require us to have a thermionic fabricator. And a thermionic fabricator requires a whole mess of things. Well, not really a whole mess. It just requires sturdy casing, a chest, and some gold ingots. And the sturdy casing is just a bunch of bronze. Which we're out of bronze, so we need to make more bronze. <laughs> ah, so much, so much effort goes into this stuff. And I'm going to have to end the episode here because we are starting to run a little bit closer to our mark. I'll probably mine more resources and fill up those chests, I guess. Probably work on making the tower. Maybe I'll even work on making some decorative designs on the keep. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and goodbye.